This is Danny Flexen for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Mark Livewire Leach, super bantamweight contender. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks, mate. You? Yeah, good, thank you. Great chance to catch up with you. We haven't spoken since the big win in October last year over Kez Ashvak. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about that. Have you watched it back much? And if so, what do you think about your performance? No, I don't really watch um, anything back, but I can remember it. Um, you know, I was on, I was on, um, on point. Um, there, was, there was a game plan and we stuck to the game plan and it worked, basically. And we, cause we, knew, we knew each other, the, the fundamentals from years ago when we used to spar. So we, we've said a lot before the fight anyway. So, um, yeah, I boxed to my best ability. And, um, you know, I, I didn't have as much time as him. I've gone up a weight. Everything was in his favour, yet he still says um, it wasn't his night. But he, he says it is what it is. And it, I won fair and square. There was no off nights. Yeah, I mean, you looked a, a worthy winner at the end, certainly. But did you have any concerns <laughs> before the decision was announced, obviously being on a uh, matchroom show and he's had the big build-up, GB pedigree and so on? Yeah, you, you, you've always got that in the back of your mind, you know, being the away fighter. And, you know, you've, I've seen a lot of worse decisions than, than, um, than mine. Um, previously, even on Italian stuff, and um, yeah, it's always in the back of mind being in the way fight. But I knew deep down, I did enough, especially with them two. We got them two knockdowns. I should have won, but yeah, with them two knockdowns, I reckon that sealed deal. There was no way of them um, robbing me. And has it led to anything with Matchroom? Have they talked about bringing you back for other shows or signing you up or anything like that? No, no, I'm not at anything. Not, not, not one thing. You know, I've been in the gym ticking over. You know, um, just keep, keep myself. At a certain level, not not overdoing it, just oh, keep me keeping me lungs open, you know, waiting for another last minute fight if if it happens. How do you feel, kind of weight wise? Because that was just, like you said, you moved up from Bantam for that one, but it was a British title eliminator. So now you're kind of in the frame for that British title. Will you stay at Super Bantam weight? I can I can make Bantam weight easier. Um, it, I'll, be, I'll be in between the weights, you know, it's wherever the opportunity is because I've not got the sky behind me or the, the big shows behind me like that. So. I can't turn down an opportunity. I, I, I'll happily go up another way if they have to, if that's where the fights are. I'll happily go up another way and I'll go back down to Bantam weights. I'm in between them three weights, but my original weight would be Bantam. But like I say, it's where, where the opportunity is lie for me. The board have ordered a final eliminator, uh, um, Super Bantam, between yourself and Thomas Asomba. I know your um, promoter, Steve Wood, uh, has got... Uh, went through the negotiations and he'll be staging that at some point, obviously small hall boxing still on the shelf at the moment, unfortunately. What, what do you make yeah. of that fight? If it, if it does take place, he obviously had that draw on the same show as you against Ashford. Um, well, it's, um, it, it, it's, another, it's another win for me, you know, um, but me and him are both bantamweight fighters. So we're both moving up a weight to fight at a belt that's not even our original weight, but we're going back. That's where the opportunity is like. But um, yeah, it's, it's going to be another, another win for me all, all day. What did you make of his um, performance against Thomas Patrick Ward? It was on the same show as yours. So I don't know if you would have got to see it on the yeah, night. Yeah, I yeah, oh, well, yeah. watched it. Yeah, he, he boxed good. He was, um, he was on the ball. He boxed good. He was sharp. But I just think I'm that little bit sharper and a little bit faster just like I was with Kez. And, you know, we're both the same weight. So I reckon I'll... Um, move the way when I move up a weight, I bring the power with me. Whereas he, he didn't look as strong at that weight, if that makes any sense. Whereas I felt stronger moving up a weight. When, when, he, he might be a small bantam weight, he might be able to make the weight below. Um, yeah, but I reckon I'd be like, physically stronger, sharper, and faster. And have you had any indication from <laughs> um, Steve when that might take place, or, or indeed when he might be bringing shows back in, in general? Not, not really. No, we, we're hoping around June, July time, but there's nothing set in stone. There's nothing like there's no dates. So I'm not out of any date, but that's what I'm hoping for. And I say I'm just in the gym, ticking over, waiting for a phone call, basically. And should you be successful against the Somba, that puts you as the mandatory then for the British title, uh, currently held by Brad Foster, who's in action this weekend, albeit not defending the Lonsdale belt. He's got international opposition. What, what do you think of Brad as a fighter and, and do you expect him to stay around at British level? He's, a, he's a really he's really good. You know, um, I reckon once he's won his, once, once he's won his next fight, I reckon he'll move up then in the rankings and um, vacate the brace. But, you know, I, I won the English through someone vacating it. So I want to fight the champions to earn it instead of fighting, like, eliminators all the time. Because I got told the last fight was for the final eliminator against Kez. But then it turned out... Um, it wasn't a final eliminator. And then I had to vacate my English 
because that's because um, Steve said if that if 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 it did do that, um, that um, fight with Kez will be classed as a final eliminator. And there's an interview with Eddie Hearn saying it's a final limit against me and Kez, but then it ends up just being a, a normal eliminator, and I've got to do another one now. So it's just like it's like my face doesn't fit kind of thing, you know. I'm, I'm with, whatever gets thrown my way, I'm, I'm going for him. I'm winning, but then my face doesn't fit to get to the next stage. It's, it's, it's mad. Why do you think that is? Is it just that you're not with a major promoter? Is it that you've you know come up on away shows and served your apprenticeship that way? What, what do you think is the reason? Yeah, I reckon it's that because I'm, I'm not signed with the, with the guys. I'm not. I've not got a massive fan base behind me like people have. Um, who, who, who's got a sky and stuff? And it's because obviously I'm a working dad. Um, or I don't go out socialising that much. And um, if I'm not in, the, if I'm not at work, I'm in the gym. If I'm not in the gym. I'm at home with the kids. Whereas normally lads my age, or like going through the going through the eighteen, nineteens, I was out with the mates, making more mates. Whereas I had a kid young, so I was always like like a fan man kind of thing. So I've not really got that massive fan base. But hopefully, from from that last fight on Sky, you know, and hopefully if we get any more on Sky, there'll be quite a few more jumping on. You know, being from Salford as well, hopefully a few more Salford people will, will get get a ticket as well. That's, 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 that's just the hardest bit, you know, fa- um, selling the tickets. Fighting is easy, Tra- training is obviously hard, but the hardest part is um, the selling tickets. And um, hopefully, uh, the more I sell, then hopefully the, the better the chance of me fighting on the big shows. How old is your, your child? Isn't that, I've got four. Oh, you've got four kids? Yeah, wow. Yeah, my is nine, five, three, and then a, a seven-month so yeah, I've got my hands full. <laughs> it sounds like it. What, what do you do for a living outside of boxing? Just warehouse work. You know, it was, it was something to pay the bills and keep keep the food on the kids' tables. Um, and, and it's the right times around the gym and around school times. So I work nights, so it's a bit of a um, it's the only thing that I fit. I couldn't do a normal one nine to five because then I'd miss gym and I won't be able to take the kids to school and pick them up at three o'clock as well. So. Yeah, nighttime shifts are ideal for they're not, they're not ideal for a fight, but for my lifestyle, a night shift is um is ideal. How much of a difference has it made to your career and your development working in that gym with Jamie Moore and some of the other fighters that are in there? Because obviously, in the last couple of years, a lot more higher profile fighters have joined the the stable. Yeah, it's, it's good, really good to be around. You know, you're in the gym like Kyle Frampton, like even Martin and Rocky. Everyone was there. You you're always in the background you're always looking and seeing what they're good at and trying to add that to your game plan and just just a good vibe in the gym everyone just bounces off each other you know you have a laugh and you know when to be serious so it's all part and parcel of boxing me I love, I love that gym it's um that one of the best gyms I've, I've ever been in so yeah i can't wait to um, keep going there is it kind of inspiring as well and in that you see frampton's obviously going for a world title at a third weight uh, rocky's had a world title martin murray uh, just come off that fight with Billy Joe. It must make you think what's out there for you once you get kind of the ball rolling a bit more. Yeah, it, 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 it's, like I say, it's just the selling the tickets. Once I can sell like, X amount of tickets, like what, what the what the promoters want, then it'll happen. I, I reckon that's when my career will start boost kicking. But obviously, because it is COVID, there's not really been no one allowed to watch. So that's worked in my favour a little bit because, of, like I said, the tickets. And I, w- I wouldn't have been on Sky last show. No, I would have never had, had, had that opportunity if it wasn't for COVID. So it's come at the right time for me. But I'm hope, I'm hope to get another one or two before things are allowed back to normal. And then that, that I reckon that's when I'll have a bigger fan base around me. And then that, that's when I can progress to the next stage kind of thing. In an ideal world, if you got to pick your next kind of big fight, so obviously you, you want to get back out and maybe shed <laughs> some rust depending on when it is, who would you want to fight and, and at what weight? Like Lee, Lee McGregor is the top one. He's got the British, he's got the British at my original weight, and he's got the Commonwealth as well. And he's just won his last fight, which was a good, 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 good um, statement. Yeah, yeah. So I, I want to fight the best to be the best, and he's obviously up there. So that that would be would be my ideal next fight for the British at my weight, or even the weight above uh, this weight, Brad Foster. If you don't, if you don't vacate, um, any of them two fights um, would be ideal for me. You know, because I, I want that British title. Jamie had it. You know, bringing the belt back to Salford. It's one of the it's like a people's belt that one. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to eventually get it. When, when I do get it, just do that one opportunity. Good stuff. All right, well, I really appreciate your time. Um, I look forward to having your next fight date announced, whether it is a Samba or whether it's something else. And maybe we can catch up again then. Yep, yeah, hopefully sooner rather than later. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll keep everything <laughs> crossed for you. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Take care. Yeah, see you in a bit. Bye-bye.